Apple Music Essentials, The Chicks, music's most influential artists and the stories behind their songs. If we were going to talk about just maybe something being meaningful in your career, and if we talk about Wide Open Spaces as a single, a four-week number one, CMA Song of the Year, um, and just that message. I feel like I see it's like the trail of breadcrumbs of where y'all are going. I see who I know y'all to be as a fan now, even in that song specifically. Has that one stood the test of time for y'all? For sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was another one that we sort of had to fight for, not big time fight for, but the label did not understand <laughs> that putting that song on the record. Um, and we felt like that was our biggest song that would connect the most with um, our audience, or we didn't even have an audience at that point, but <laughs> with an audience, with a female audience. And my dad had brought us that song. It was written by Susan Gibson from the Groobies that were a Texas band that he had produced. And so I brought that song to the band when I joined. And yeah, that's, I, I, don't, I can't imagine us ever doing a show without playing that song. People definitely want to hear that song. Well, that, it sounds like your audience, as you understood it in that moment, was maybe y'all. Like, what do we want? to hear. Emily and I have known this for a long time that you can't bring a song or write a song that Natalie can't own as a singer. So there have been lots of songs that we've we've written or, or brought or whatever. And I, I think that she has to sing the truth. But we were also young enough to where that that song identified with us too as young women. We were like, none of us were married yet. Well, Marty had been married, but um, we were just basically like this new horizon of a record deal and having our first bus and going out there on the road. And I mean, all this was new to us. So that song wasn't just about reflecting other girls' thoughts or, or our younger self. It was our current self. So then Wide Open Spaces leads the way for you guys to have sort of your fir first foray as co-writers in a commercial, like, radio success kind of way. Were y'all, did you have to fight to get you or mine on the album? I don't think no. so. I mean, it was kind of the, it was our one prize gem we were bringing to the table at the time. We weren't big writers back then. And, um, and so I think they, they were really receptive to it, I felt like. Yeah, and You Were Mine was the first song I ever sang with Marty and Emily before they asked me to join the band, I, I uh, was the demo singer on that demo. <laughs> <laughs> or so she thought. We, need, we needed to see, we knew she could sing. We needed to see if we clicked harmony wise and personality wise. So yeah, we, we were checking her out <laughs> at that session. But I was going to say that, that I was hope Emily and I did write You Were Mine and we were hoping that it wasn't going to be a single <laughs> because it was very awkward because we had written it about our parents' divorce. And there are some real zinger lines in there. And I just remember playing this theater and having my stepmom and father in like the third row. And they're just listening to all the lyrics. And uh, it, it's hard when you write about other people's pain instead of maybe a, your story. You know, so I just remember their faces and feeling so bad about that. It's like writing the memoir about your family. So next comes... Goodbye, Earl. To me, Goodbye, Earl, my favorite thing about that song is the video. It was one of the most fun videos. That and Ready to Run, I think, are my favorite two videos, like, as far as the fun of making them. I think we did it in two days, but it was a great two days. It was so much fun. I mean, we had heard that that song, which was written by Dennis Lindy, had been making the rounds in Nashville for years. Mm. And, I mean, no, I, I kind of felt like no one could have recorded that but us, <laughs> you know? We would sit in these A&R meetings and listen to all this music. And it's like the, the songwriters in Nashville were trying to write us something that they thought we would like, or maybe that thought they'd make the demos, three-part oh. harmony and banjo and fiddle. And we, we wanted to hear something different because we were listening to like 50 songs a week, you know, trying, because we weren't writing ourselves at that point. And I just remember us hearing this and just, getting so excited that something was different. If we move to Landslide, probably the most famous, has to be the most famous cover of this song ever. Just having a baby, feeling emotional and feeling like I'm getting older too. Like it just, you know, went through this major time of life and you immediately have to mature and grow up a lot when you have to look after somebody else. And so, yeah, it, that song, yeah. even though I knew that song, 
my whole life, it feels like it grabbed me differently at that point in my life. And I just knew that, yeah, we could do a beautiful version of that. I could hear exactly, you know, how the fiddle and the banjo and the harmonies would sound on that for sure. I mean, I think we can all do that when we hear a song that we know. We just felt free. We felt like we wanted to turn in anything but a top 40 hit record. We wanted to just go down a rabbit hole, got Natalie's dad to produce, got all our favorite bluegrass musicians. There were no rules. It was probably anything but make trying to make a hit record. <laughs> and that was so freeing. If we turn to Young Man, I think that's the most quoted lyric I've seen online. I don't know about y'all, but you're of me, not mine. It's just the overall sentiment of that song is that you can form your own path, especially to all sort of divorced uh, kids with divorced parents. You know, I think it's important when your parents are divorcing to know that you don't have to carry their burdens and and you are ugh, that you are their DNA, but they're not. That doesn't it automatically make them, you know, uh, a slave to your problems or those aspects of your personality or whatever it is that they don't like. They they don't have to repeat that. They don't have to take that on. They can leave what they don't like about you <laughs> and take what they do yeah. like about you and form their own path. Well, that makes me want to ask you, that to me sounds like personal legacy. Like you can be you and some of me, but mostly you. I want to know like, what, what do you want your, what's the musical legacy right now? Hmm. Hmm. Apparently we haven't figured that one out yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what that says to me? Then there's more Chicks music coming. Like, could you guys be the band you wanted to be if you didn't do the name change? That needed to happen. And we, we knew that needed to happen for quite some time. We were feeling uneasy about it probably after the, the, the Bush stuff and not knowing how to do that. And um, I'm just trying to kind of mature uh, with that name is really hard because <laughs> you just feel like yeah. it has so many connotations that make people think they know who you are mm -hmm. based on your name. And it just kind of felt icky. Um, and so we would try to move to DCX. So a lot of, if you look back, like a lot of our, our tour, mm -hmm. our merch has merch. DCX or the chicks. And it just, that, that subtlety was not catching on. So definitely with uh, George Floyd's murder and everything that started hap happening with Black Lives Matter, uh, we were like, oh my God, yeah, we, we got to do this and do this as soon as possible. Um, but it took some time to just dot the I's, cross the T's, make sure it was legally, what were we going to change it to? We had a really funny management Zoom call where we were throwing out ridiculous names. <laughs> And, you know, just came back to we had to go through that to come back to, OK, the most obvious thing is the chicks. Now, now we got to get lawyers involved and figure out how to make that our name. And it's not like we were walking around like feeling burdened by this name. It was more like, you know, when something like when something changes or whatever, it's like once it happens, then you realize the, like the, the weight that was lifted. Like you didn't even know you were carrying that weight until it was gone. Ooh. And then it's like, oh yeah, the chick, that's who, we we're the chicks. What were we thinking? That's a way cooler yeah. name. <laughs> what, were, what were we so yeah. scared of? We're the chicks. <laughs>